Hey, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jordan with the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show 77, and I am pumped that you are here today because today we have back on the show Mark Vlaskamp, who came on and who gets referenced all the time from the last time that he was on. He is the guy, I think in episode 20, if you want to go back and check that out, I'll put a link in the show notes, or if you're on YouTube down below in the description, you can find the show notes with that link and all the other links, by the way, at laundromatresource.com slash show 77. Uh, you can find the show notes there with all the links. So make sure you check that out. But he was there and he is the guy who started a laundry pickup and delivery business without a laundromat and is, uh, well, as you'll see in today's episode, has gone ballistic. He was on like a year and a half ago here. And uh, at that point, he his pickup and delivery was growing, but he did not have a location yet. He's getting ready to close on his third. You'll hear more all about that and, and their huge, huge plans that they have to move forward in this industry. Tons of really good information. But not only that, one of the things that I am super pumped about is that Mark, along with a few other owners, are going to join me this Thursday. That's November 11th, 2021. If you're listening to this when it comes out, uh, he, they're going to join me and, uh, and all of them are doing awesome. They're top performers in pickup and delivery from all over the country, doing slightly different things. And we're doing a webinar together, got some all-stars here uh, on how to start and scale your pickup and delivery business. So whether you are interested in starting uh, a pickup and delivery business, or if you have one and you're ready to take it up to the next level, uh, these are some serious players, uh, just in all seriousness. These guys are, uh, they're, they're doing it, they're doing it big and they're doing it right. And you will be able to level up your business joining us over there. So the link to that will be, uh, on, again, on the show notes, laundromatresource.com slash show 77. If you're on YouTube, they're down below in the description. Or if you just want to go to laundromatresource.com slash events and sign up for this webinar and any others, we do a live free webinar every single Thursday. So come join us at one of those. Um, and uh, let's, yeah, dude. So much good stuff. Okay. But I'm, I'm like extra excited about this week's, uh, webinar. So make sure you sign up for that, uh, and come join us, learn about pickup and delivery or learn how to take your pickup and delivery to the next level. There will be some question and answers. And I promise I will not do a whole lot of talking. I'm going to do more hosting and less talking because these guys serious, they're, they're serious business. All right. So, uh, just come join us, learn from, I say this all the time, right? Like work with the best, learn from the best, become the best. Uh, this is a class A opportunity to do that. Okay. So there's that. Uh, I also want to encourage you. Hey, the more you're networking in this business, the more we're learning from each other. We're helping each other out. We're asking each other questions. We're answering each other's questions. I bet you know where I'm going with this. The better we're all going to be in this business. We're going to make more money. We're going to serve more people and we're going to do it faster and better. Uh, the best way, or I don't know if it's the best, but one of the best ways to be doing that is to head over to the laundromat resource forums, go introduce yourself on the new member forums, go, uh, ask a question, answer a question over there. And let's, you know, continue to interact. Lots of really great stuff happening over there. There was, I just peeked over there right before I recorded this. And there's some, uh, fun conversations happening on looking for brokers in different areas. Uh, somebody asked about financing options in Australia, which is, uh, man, I never saw that conversation coming uh, a mile away, you know, when I started the forum. So pretty cool. And obviously, welcome to all the new members who've gone over to the new member introduction forums and introduced yourselves over there. Go meet them. Go welcome them. Again, being a part of the community is really going to accelerate your growth, whether you're just getting started or you're a veteran in the business and, uh, you know, looking to continue to improve. And let's be honest, if you're not looking to continue to improve your business, then your business is probably dying. So let's keep up the good work. Let's keep propelling each other to new heights and, uh, and all that good stuff. Okay. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to pound that any harder. Uh, but I do want to mention real quick last, uh, just a few days ago, actually, uh, released a podcast episode 76, 
where I announced uh, Laundromat Marketplace. I almost said Laundromat Resource. LaundromatMarketplace.com. And that's a place where uh, agents or just owners can go and list their uh, laundromats for sale for free. Go list it over there for free. And again, a ton of traffic coming through Laundromat Resource from all the various channels, from the website, podcasts, YouTube, email list, buyers email list, Instagram. We got people coming from all over the place that are interested in buying laundromats. And uh, this is going to be the place that I send them. So tons of free, good traffic. Uh, if you're an agent out there, or if you know an agent out there, pass this along to them because I think it's going to be a huge resource for the great agents to be able to connect up uh, with you guys who are buying laundromats. And I, right now, I am all about connecting laundromat owners and people who want to buy laundromats with the best people that uh, that they can work with in their area. So I want to find those agents, get them on that site and get you guys connected with them. So if you could do me one favor, I don't ask for a lot, uh, but if you could do me one favor, uh, if you know of any agents or distributors who sell laundromats, if you could just mention to them, hey, you know, if you have listings, throw them up on this website because not only are you going to get a lot of very targeted traffic uh, coming and looking at your laundromats, but it's also a great place for those guys to get connected with potential buyers and potential sellers. Awesome. Uh, just real quick too, one of the cool things was we had uh, one laundromat that was listed on there when I launched the podcast that uh, within a day uh, went from uh, being on sale or being for sale to not on sale for sale, being for sale to pending uh, within a day. Very, very cool. And again, just there's a lot of targeted traffic going there. So uh, if you're an owner who's looking to sell your laundromat and you just want to do it on your own, you can list there too. But specifically agents and distributors or whoever else is selling laundromats, that is a, an awesome place to go. And again, I'm going to be sending people there, uh, especially the more uh, laundromats we get for sale listed on there. And there's a lot more perks coming. Uh, I can't mention them yet because they're all in the works, but there are perks for both buyers and sellers coming who list and who buy through that website. So uh, I just, I'm super excited about it. So get excited with me. And again, it's good for the industry. I think that's the main reason I did it. All right. Uh, with all that said, let's get into it with Mark Vlaskamp. Uh, again, a super cool episode and you're going to want to join our webinar uh, that we're doing with a couple other owners uh, on Thursday, November 11th. That's this coming Thursday from when this is coming out. All right. Uh, I'll see you on the other side of this with Mark, and it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a doozy. You're going to enjoy it. All right, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Atmosphere TV. You may remember back in episode 34 when Atmosphere TV's Mike Kelly joined me on the podcast. It was an epic, epic episode. If you haven't listened to it, show 34, laundromatresource.com slash show 34. Go check it out. It's incredible. A ton of value there. One of the things we talked about is just the importance of creating a good, positive atmosphere in your laundromat. And I was just rereading the book by Simon Sinek, Start With Why. And one of the things that really stands out to me is that people don't make purchase decisions based on you know the logic of you know any decision that they're making to spend their money. It's more based on a feeling and an association. And so it's really important to uh, create a positive feeling, a positive atmosphere, no pun intended, uh, in your laundromat to help people associate this chore that most people don't like doing with something positive. Atmosphere TV is an incredible way to help improve the atmosphere of your laundromat. And basically, if you haven't heard of it, what it is, is it has 50 plus channels uh, created specifically for businesses with everything from uh, sports clips, hilarious fail videos, draw dropping videos from all over the world. There's automobile channels. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. My kids love, love, love it. And my customers love it. Atmosphere TV could be a great way to either supplement your cable or a lot of us laundromat owners are cutting our cable bill completely and running Atmosphere TV. They're designed to be used with no audio, but they also do have an audio option. That way you can kind of design the Atmosphere 
texture of your laundromat the way that you want it. So get rid of cable, get rid of those news channels that are bringing negativity into your laundromat and fill your laundromat with positive videos that bring positive vibes to your customers with atmosphere TV. And if you use the code word, the keyword, the uh, promo code, I don't know, resource, promo code resource, then they're going to waive your setup fee. And now everything is going to be free. There's no monthly fee for it. Um, you can use it for free in your laundromat and it's going to be a vibe to your uh, atmosphere. So Check out atmosphere.tv. I'll put a link down in the description on YouTube or in the show notes. Check it out there. Make sure you use the keyword resource that we can get that thing for free. And, or if you'd like, email Mike at mike.kelly at atmosphere.tv. Mark, I am so pumped that you are back on the show. Welcome and thanks for coming back on. How you doing? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. It's been, uh, it's been fun keeping up with all of this. Oh yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, man. And I know that we've been kind of chatting every now and then and getting some updates and that's why I wanted to have you back on the show to get some more updates. But just in case uh, people don't know, I should, I probably should have looked this up beforehand. So while you're chatting, I'm going to look this up on what episode you were on before. I don't know if you know, do you know? I don't. I feel like it's the highlight of your life. It was, I feel like it was a long time ago, (laughs) long time ago. (laughs) It was a long time ago. I'm going to look it up in a second. Uh, but you, you were on the show. And in fact, I, I end up referencing your podcast almost maybe one, definitely one of the most of all the podcast episodes, if not maybe the most. And one of the big reasons for that is because you kind of started in this business backwards. You started with a pickup and delivery service. You didn't have a laundromat. You partnered with a laundromat. And I get a lot of questions about that specific topic. And I'm like, you want to talk to somebody who's killing it with this, you know, go check out this episode, reach out to Mark. Uh, He's killing it. So I thought it'd be cool to get you back on the show just to kind of get an update on, did you go bankrupt? What, you know, what happened starting backwards and working up and uh, where things been going? So why don't you try to catch us up a little bit, maybe, maybe like a brief, brief, uh, background on how you got into the business. But you know, if you want more, I'm going to tell you what episode to go look up in a second, but, uh, maybe a brief background on how you got in and then what business has been looking like lately. Yeah, absolutely. So not, not bankrupt, but it sure felt like it for a while doing all that laundry without a laundromat. Uh, certainly better margins when you are vertically integrated into the actual uh, facility. Uh, we get that question quite a bit too. And, and uh, probably a lot of, a lot of that from your podcast. And, and I, I, I recommend it with extreme caution that you really have to know what you're getting into that it is very low margin to do the delivery without the laundromat. Um, but certainly can be done. And I think with the popularity of delivery, there's are, uh, there are people um, taking that on and some, some smart folks we've talked to. Um, I'm very happy to have the laundromat now, though. So I think last we talked, uh, we had a booming pickup and delivery business that we partnered with laundromats to use their facilities during off hours to produce all of our laundry. Um, we ended up uh, purchasing uh, the laundromat to our flagship store in Austin is uh, it's about 5,000 square feet of laundromat and almost 3,000 square feet of warehouse. So Whoa. big, big, big facility, uh, almost 200 machines that are just spinning 24-7. We have day shift, we have swing shifts, and we have third shifts, and we are holding laundry like a warehouse, uh, operating as a traditional laundromat by day, uh, trying to take up you know a third or a half of the facility, leaving a third, two-thirds or a half for retail customers. And then at night, we close the door to the public and we uh, that's when all the thoroughbreds come in and we really uh, crank out some laundry. Um, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, we're flirting with 70 plus folks on staff now. So it's, it's uh, much more of a logistics and a warehousing business than you think your traditional coin op laundromat operates like. Um, Luckily, I think we were forged in the fire doing this without the laundromat. So th- that was, you know, that was like batting practice for this. Is that we're we're cruising now. Uh, owning the laundromats makes it significantly easier. Yeah, holy cow, man, that's crazy. And you know, it's pretty funny because I don't know, maybe like a year ago, or I don't know, something like a year ago, you sent me, a, you texted me a video, and it was <laughs> of this laundromat, and there. 
you were just kind of walking through the laundromat and there was laundry everywhere, like on top of all the bulkheads, there were shelves that were packed. There was stuff lined up on the, like the end caps. There was, you know, literally bags and bags of laundry out on the sidewalk. And uh, you just had so much laundry going on. I was like, holy cow, these guys have got to get a location <laughs> for themselves. sounds like you got a doozy of a location with like almost 8,000 total square feet of, of space there. That's, that's significant. That's big, real big. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the, um, you know, now that we are, we're, we're able to fill up laundry mats quickly. Uh, we, we feel like we're really comfortable with the playbook of turning demand on and off. And when we go into a territory, we can, we can generate demand and fill that up fast. Um, so now when we're looking to acquire laundry mats, we're, um, knock on wood, we're hoping to close on one in Houston uh, towards the end of this month. And uh, we, in, in the search for that, we're not even looking for anything smaller than 5,000 square feet. That, that It has to be big. It has to be bright, clean, safe. And, and we have to be able to fill, fill it you know, with, with 7,000 pounds of laundry every night. Yeah. How are you... I mean, how are you doing so much? But how did you get to that point? So I know, I mean, you kind of started from scratch. Like, like we said, with no laundromat, how did you get to a point where you aren't even looking at a space that's under 5,000 square feet? Cause you're so confident that you can fill that up and need that space in order to operate in a new location. Yeah. So, um, I think my thesis on the market, um, on a macro level is that laundromats are trending bigger. I think their uh, owners are becoming better capitalized. The, the business itself can be much more than a single revenue stream business when you add in the full service laundry, whether it's over the counter or delivery. Um, and so our thesis on the actual locations is that uh, they're, they're not trending smaller, they're trending bigger. So we're just trying to get ahead of that. Uh, made the mistake a time or two in the past of getting one that's, that's too small. And you know, the, Acquisition headaches are the same whether you're buying a thousand square foot laundromat with ten machines or a six thousand square foot laundromat with two hundred machines. Um, so that's I think that's just the general uh, approach that we take is that bigger uh, is better, and if you build it, you know, like that, they will come. Um, on the the playbook side, um, it's you know we were looked at funny by operators here when we said we wanted to do pickup and delivery now, you know, six years ago or something like that. Uh, that was yeah right place, right time. You know, we were right on that trend. I still get people in my comments section and on Twitter saying that, that, uh, you know, delivery is a phase and that, uh, you know, a lot of old, old school folks like to say that coin off is going to last forever and delivery is soon to go away. Um, we think we have the playbook for acquiring customers figured out fairly well, as long as that phase lasts. And I think, I think it's much more than a phase. Um, and it's, it's been a lot of, um, SEO, you know, we, we have a, a strong digital team that can, uh, we, we rank highly. We have, uh, really targeted paid ads and, and we have the vans driving around, uh, that can spur up demand, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we think, I think it's a supply problem. Uh, and I know other operators that I've talked to, uh, doing high amounts across the, the U S it's not a demand problem. Once you, once you figure out the demand, it's, it totally is the supply problem. You need space, you need machines, you need employees that most of the folks I've talked to, um, especially in October is one of the better months of the year for uh, when we're recording this for delivery service. Uh, most folks are turning ads off, raising prices and trying to scare customers away that, uh, that you need machines, you need space and, and you need uh, uh, the people to fulfill those orders. Yeah. And I've, I just on comment on that last little section there. I mean, I found that one of the big keys to success is if everybody's doing something, especially if everybody's at a time where they're taking their foot off the pedal, that's the time to put your foot on the pedal. And I know a lot of, you know, as the holidays kind of approach here, a lot, like you said, a lot of people are doing things that, you know, seem, you know, in theory, like maybe good ideas, but it's really the time to go hard because you can really, you know, use those time. I mean, generally speaking, especially in warmer clients, these are the months that are the big months for, you know, for us as laundromat owners, as pickup and delivery, because people were in heavier clothes, they were in more clothes, kids are in school, the filthy, filthy children are getting dirty all the time. Right. And, and that's the time to push, push the pedal down and keep going. And I know a lot of times 
our tendency is, hey, it's the holidays. I want to take it easy. But if you want to take it easy, go get a job and don't own a business. That's my that's my view on that. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, this is uh, I hate holidays. Holidays as a laundromat operator and, and owner are tough because the business doesn't stop. Um, we're, we're cleaning clothes 365 uh, days a year. Um, but yeah, certainly, certainly uh, good October, man. I love it. Lots of towels, lots of blankets, jeans, jackets, everything is, is uh, considerably easier to fold and, and weighs more and fills more. We do flat rate bags, so it fills more space in the bag. Yeah. Okay. So well, take us back because last time we talked, you didn't own a location, a laundromat location, and now you do. So how did you get from, you know, and, and you mentioned also earlier, uh, that, you know, margins are slim. It's tough to do this business without your own location. Uh, cause your costs are a lot higher than if you own your own location. So how did you manage that phase of things? And how did you get from that into your first location? Yeah. So, um, we found ourselves growing like crazy and with the operation as it was originally set up without a laundromat, we were paying a lot to use someone else's machines. And then it's a vicious cycle of as you grow, you're actually straining cash flow much, much, much more than you otherwise would have if you didn't grow. Right. So on one side, we had um, uh, a lot of the traditional lenders saying, um, A, you need to be more profitable, but B, you also need to grow. And, and we're trying to point out in the model, like you, you get to choose one or the other. <laughs> um, so we found uh, with our unique approach to it, it made sense for a bit of a unique uh, funding round to kind of get on the right side of things. Some folks that saw could understand the position uh, maybe were a little more... Uh, a little less risk averse than a traditional commercial banker. So uh, we piled some of our own money in and, and actually partnered up with some uh, some really smart uh, folks that saw the value in a, uh, adding a technology and a service side to a traditionally uh, unsexy and absentee business. Um, so a lot of our investors have experience in self-storage, uh, car washes, mobile home parks, things like that that you wouldn't think make great businesses. And you could probably lump laundromats into that adding a layer of technology, adding a layer of service, and then uh, continuing on a roll-up plan. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's huge. And uh, I, I mean, the, the dilemma is real, right? When, especially coming from the angle. I know that we talked a little bit when you were trying to figure out mm -hmm. the funding piece of it, because you know, the dilemma is, is real when you have a lot of income coming in, but your expenses are going up almost faster than your income because of the, the business model, because you're stuck where you don't have your own equipment and you can't get the efficiencies of, of owning your own, you know, equipment and your own assets. Uh, and so trying to find that financing is difficult. Do you have any tips for anyone who, you know, is in a situation like that, who maybe has, you know, uh, a solid business, but, you know, maybe doesn't look that way to a lender at first or something like that um, on how to get financing to take your business to the next level, which is what you did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first thing to, uh, to consider here is even every month we get further away from COVID and, and more into the future. Uh, I think pickup and delivery is gaining credibility as a real business, a real income stream and something that's sustainable. Of the times we were looking um, for that, we knew that we we knew that we can you could walk into it every night and know that it wasn't going away, right? Uh, packed full to the roof, um, aka not a. Fake. I think a lot of the <laughs> right. I think a lot of the right. I think a lot of the traditional lenders and and, um, and lenders in general, even even uh, equity investors, they uh, were hesitant. I think the further we get away from that uh, pickup and delivery and full service and in any consideration is is getting more credibility as a, as an asset class, uh, on your, on your books. And I would imagine that, um, there's a couple companies now that, that had to get rejected, get rejected, get rejected and prove everybody else, uh, wrong uh, our, ourselves included. I think, uh, from what we're hearing that pick up and delivery volume is getting more and more considered into that. So I would hope that anybody in our situation has a much easier time now. I think uh, us and a few others have kind of broken down that wall, but, um, uh, one thing I learned through the process is is um, money is out there if you're building something cool. Um, you just have to be creative with how you get it. Uh, I, I 
um, having only experienced bootstrapping, I thought everything came through a bank, that there was a gatekeeper. And we've certainly partnered with great lenders that operate as traditional banks and, and lending institutions. Um, but if you are in a business that might be viewed as a little risky and can't get through there, there is money out there uh, through other uh, avenues. And that was a big step for us is we kind of made the transition from laundromat owners to business owners when we realized that in that, uh, okay, I can teach folks how to run a laundromat, but I also need to teach uh, myself and, and we need to teach ourselves how to uh, get financing and, and plan for growth. And if we're going to be doing this thing with a scarlet letter on it, that's marked as risky for the rest of our lives, uh, we're going to have to get creative at these, these creative financing options. Yeah. I mean, you said something that First of all, it really strikes home with me, but it, I mean, it's just so true. Money is out there when you're building something cool. You know, when you got something that you're building, something you believe in, something, uh, you know, that, that, you know, you're just committed to a hundred percent, you know, and people see that and they see the potential in that the money is out there and you may need to get creative, especially if you're kind of trailblazing like you guys did, uh, with sort of, you know, I mean, it's not new, new, but it's, it's relatively new, uh, you know, branch of our industry, you know, then I, I think that, I, I mean, I just love, first of all, listen, I'm just going to give you a lot of credit here for a second. The tenacity that you guys had in the beginning to start this business, number one, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many people I talk to in my coaching who just have trouble getting started and understandably so it's a tough step to take. It's scary all that. Right. So that already, you know, puts you in the top, top percentage of, of entrepreneurs, of business owners, just getting started, you know, and then having that tenacity to run your business and scale it on such slim margins and stay alive. Huge. Most people aren't willing to do it. Can't do it. Won't do it. Right. And then having the tenacity to chase down money. I mean, that's not an easy thing. And to be told no, and to be told what you're doing will never work. And to be told that, you know, you're wasting your time and, and all those negative messages, like that stops the majority of the people who made it to that point, you know, again, and, and pushing through that and getting to that next level, like huge, huge props, um, to you guys for, for doing that. And, uh, can you talk a little bit about What's it been like having a location versus before you had a location? What are what are some of the differences or maybe similarities? I don't know. Yeah, uh, thank you for the compliments. I remember now why I enjoyed the first time so much. It's just me getting gassed up for an hour. So uh, we're gonna have to do this more often. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're right, man. Yeah, you're tenacity. Right, man. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, the tenacity is something that uh, it, it's definitely a it stuck as a core value here. Uh, it's, it's awesome to see it. We've got a full staff of, uh, middle managers. So it's, it's not us operating anymore. We've got five, six, seven guys, full-time salary that, uh, if they've learned anything in getting set up, it's that, uh, don't back down from a fight. Like you're going to get punched in the nose every day. Uh, and that's just something we do here. There's, there's no playbook for this. We're building the playbook that other people are going to copy. Yeah. Um, before and after, man, I think the last time we talked, you were like, yeah, you figured out the hard part of the business. The laundromat will be easy. Man, I, we, we, we closed on one. We closed on one. And I was like, you know, Jordan said, Jordan said it'd be easy. And I spent 24 hours that weekend just cleaning everything myself because we didn't know how to do any of it. I was running back and forth to Lowe's, totally unprepared. Washers were breaking. Everything was going wrong that could. Um, it's been really enjoyable. Uh, there's a certain element of pride that we've always had for our customers and our business. We haven't had that for the facility until we started moving into them, uh, acquiring them. Yeah. Uh, and now we can put that, uh, that level of pride in the actual facility. It's, it's really enjoyable. Um, you can feel it, you can touch it. It's not just the customer relationship that you don't see them at the door. Um, so it's been a lot of fun learning the hard parts of it. Um, certainly some staffing positions in the org chart that we didn't have before that we now need to have, um, Maintenance being a big one of them, yeah. uh, janitorial is another. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're we're learning. It's awesome. I uh, I think a lot of people look at delivery, um, and and when they talk to us, we primarily get asked about the delivery side of the business, and rightfully so. Um, it's it's the sexy part of the business, the fun business to talk about. 
um, the one we're probably better known for. But I think at our core, we're we're rolling up laundromats and we're layering in the delivery that the laundromats come first. And there's a uh, that's a massive, massive part of our business. Yeah, well, that I mean, that is kind of interesting. First of all, sorry for lying straight to your face on the podcast, <laughs> which was episode 20, by the way. Uh, so if you want to go listen, actually, you just, you know, just either stop this one now and go listen to episode 20 and then come back or after this one, go listen to episode 20 because it's killer. Um, and and also, I just want to say I don't hype anyone up ever who who doesn't deserve it. It's genuine, genuine hype. So uh, the uh, it's I mean, it's interesting that you say that. Uh, because, uh, I mean, like you said, you are known for the pickup and delivery side of your stuff. And I think that's what gets highlighted a lot. It kind of reminds me a little bit in, you know, this is, this is going to be a flattering example, I think, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of McDonald's, right? Where McDonald's is known for their burgers or whatever. Right. And then, you know, most of us who have read about McDonald's or maybe watch the, uh, I forget the. Super size, no, no. Yeah, the founder, right? The founder, yeah. <laughs> I think super size means the other, the bad one. Uh, the founder, right? And you know, we know that McDonald's is a is a real estate company, right? And it kind of reminds me of that. Like they're known for the burgers, but they're you know they're really doing something bigger underneath, um, or at least as big, you know, underneath that business. And it feels a little bit similar to what you guys are doing, where you're known for your pickup and delivery. You know, if you follow these guys, you know, the fold, I'll put links to everything in the show notes. And if you're on YouTube down below the fold on, on like social stuff and, and stuff, you know, like they, they just kill it with pickup and delivery. Um, but it's interesting that you say you're rolling up laundromats and, uh, and, and creating, you know, that, that business there and, and pairing it up with the pickup and delivery and, and care at least as much and are putting at least as much effort into those, if not, if not more. Um, I did not know that. How many, how many laundromats do you have? Uh, working on three uh, this week, this month. And oh, got a lot of warm leads. Uh, now, now that we have money, this is getting fun. Yeah. Well, that's what happens, right? Like you get, you get the bug, you get the one, you get the bug. And then because laundromats can be so lucrative, especially when you're running them efficiently, you got your good systems down, you got your team in place you can start rolling them up real quick. And I, I tell new people this all the time. Once you get your first one, like a lot of doors open up to you, financing options open up to you. Like now people are going to be more likely to lend to you, uh, not only because you own other physical locations, uh, but also that the physical location is going to kind of underpin the business, you know, the, the pickup and delivery business too. Um, and a right. lot of times that, that self-serve side can you know, can kind of take care of a lot of the bills and all that stuff. And then, you know, you're just staffing at that point for your pickup and delivery. Um, so it's, I mean, I want to, yeah. Closing, closing on three. I don't want to be deceptive. I think I, I answered that quickly. So hoping for three, I know deals can fall through. I don't want uh, yeah, to yeah, uh, well, count it before we get it. And I, then I think the plan is, yeah, I think we can continue to add, you know, two or three a year. Uh, we've seen really good operators do, I mean, Roth, Luke, you guys know who they are, that, that you see the downhill snowball that they can add in just acquiring these facilities. Uh, that, that's, that's the race we're running. Uh, I think laundromats are certainly having uh, their moment in the sun right now. I, I read of times where you could get them for one to three times uh, EBITDA. Um, we're not seeing that. I, I think realistically, we're seeing a lot of three to five out there right now. Um, we paid 8.1 for one in Austin. Uh, or one we're looking at now is around five point something, five and change. So, um, laundromats are having their moment in the sun. I think pandemic was good to laundromats that is causing a price increase. I think, um, uh, smarter, smarter, better capitalized, uh, acquirers are, are, are causing a price increase. And then you can't go on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, you know, thanks to folks like Jordan, you, Cody Sanchez is on Twitter. There's all sorts of people talking about them. Um, I think that's driving multiples up. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how the pricing is changing in a post pandemic world. Uh, curious to see if that levels out or if, or if they're just a more expensive asset class from here on out. But uh, certainly having the delivery gives us uh, and Roth as well. It, it gives you an advantage to offer a higher multiple, and knowing you can fill it up and keep the thing moving uh, as compared to a multiple that maybe another 
uh, person bidding on the laundromat might not be able to go that high because they they are relying on the base business. Uh, we're we're going base business plus. Yeah, yeah, and it's an invest. It's an interesting investment strategy too. Uh, and I, I, well. Okay, real quick, I want to just kind of wrap up sort of what you're doing with your business. Can you talk to me? I mean, you mentioned you want to, you know, roll up two or three a year, uh, you know, going forward potentially. I mean, what's what's the what's the what's the goal? Do you have a goal? Do you have like an end game in mind or or a certain time horizon goal that you're shooting for? Yeah, we do. Um, I think I think we can keep going until we get to 50. I won't, I won't limit ourselves on a time horizon. And I know our discussions go back and forth on how many win and how fast and what's the model. I think there's interesting models in um, going to a private warehouses, which I'm sure we'll get into. I think pickup and delivery of the future uh, might not totally all be hinged in laundromats. I think we're early in it. But if you were asking us, you know, as we see the model today, if we aggressively uh, pursued our plan, I think we, uh, I think we're, North Star is pointing towards 50 uh, pending model changes as technology and uh, demand on the laundry side changes. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think that's cool. And I think, you know, again, this is obviously, this is just a snapshot, right? I know if there's one thing I know about owning businesses, building businesses, it's that, you know, those goals, those marks are always evolving, always changing. You know, you could get your fifth one and be like, actually we can network these now and, blow it up way bigger than if we had 50 lawn or, you know, there's things that happen, right. you learn more, you grow more. So. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The, the big, the writing on the wall, we've got them posted around here and our middle managers get them drilled in every day. Is like, we are, we are building the playbook towards 50. So, so that's the, that's the goal here. I, I fundamentally believe it's a supply problem. It's not a demand problem. Um, the demand is organically growing. Uh, the more people, not not just with us, the more operators that offer delivery, educate a customer base, just like the first bozo that tried to offer pizza delivery, right? Like now it's everywhere um, that we are so early in this that the more operators that get in on it, the more customers that know it exists, um, that the demand is going to continue to grow there. And that means if you don't have to worry about demand, it means you really, really, really have to worry about supply. Um, that if everybody in the city wants laundry delivery, we can't help them. Uh, we need a whole mess more laundromats and, and we quite frankly need a whole lot of other uh, competitors in town offering good products as well. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's a, that's like a, that feels like a very mature business thing to say that you need more competitors. Well, they, they'll, they'll mess up eventually and we'll yeah. get them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need them to, to, drive the demand and educate people so that you can win them over and it just makes it cheaper right. and easier for you to win new customers. I like that. I like that. That's no, I say that, I say that jokingly, but it is, I mean, just in the last couple of years, you're seeing it pop up everywhere. Um, I'm happy yeah. that it's staying in laundromat. I know uh, a couple venture capital has taken a couple cracks at this and they're continuing to pop up, especially in Austin where it's uh peer to peer laundry through a marketplace. There's peer, you know, B to C, marketplace apps out there. There's a lot of marketplace apps going on. And I think um, sustainability on those is questionable. Um, I love that asset like model in theory. I don't know how execution goes. Um, uh, but I, again, more more awareness to laundry delivery helps. But the, the more mature the delivery side of it gets, uh, the more I appreciate that it's staying in laundromat operators' hands for the, the lion's share of it, which is really good to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I mentioned, uh, you know, in, in some other thing like webinars and live Q and A's and stuff that, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how this thing is evolving and how different people are trying to figure out different ways to solve the laundry problem. So, and you've kind of alluded to this a few times, so maybe we can jump into, you know, what, what do you see as the future of, laundromats like where do you see us going um not not laundromat specifically but more pickup and delivery in that what do you see as the as the future of pickup and delivery yeah that's um that's a lot of what i think about um i think if you can agree with me that demand is going to continue and demand is going to grow 
um, and we're focusing on the supply side of the equation, figuring out what what's going to be the supply to fill that demand. Um, that's what that's what I like to think about a lot. I think laundromats are a great way to do it. I think we're seeing a heyday in delivery right now. Um, I'm so impressed with a lot of the operators you see online that turned that turned it on like we did from zero to nothing to now. Now you know a, a, it's a big business now. Yeah. Um, I'm curious where it goes in the future. Um, you know, the more money that comes into an industry, the more demand that comes into an industry, the better capitalized the investors come. And, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of asset light models that come up, the Silicon Valley types. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of old school industrial build a bunch of laundromats that, you know, kind of where we see ourselves. Um, I hear operators talking about um, private facilities uh, closer to an Altsco um also, they're national, I believe. The big commercial linen and um, Owl's Rags. I'm, I'm spacing on the name of their business. Anyways, where they operate in uh, Cintas, where they operate in private facilities and they drive big box trucks around. There's no customers coming to do laundry because all the machines, all the stations, all the employees, it, it runs like a pure warehouse. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're in a, a weird middle ground now where there's too much demand for laundromats to operate as a laundromat. So a lot of the laundromat operators are starting to adopt software and configure their laundromat to look more like a warehouse. You can still get it done in the same facility, right? That's what, that's what we're doing. Yep. But as you get more and more demand, I wonder how much of a warehouse you need to turn it into to, to operate. And if that is too much for laundromats, um, if it helps to have a couple production facilities and a couple laundromats, is there a sweet spot where a laundromat can only take so much laundry? Um, and, and then on the on the um, the competition side of this, is something is this something that gets consolidated? Um, right now, there's you know uh, every laundromat in town is is starting to offer delivery, so that makes for what maybe fifties high, but something around there options for delivery. Uh, does that consolidate and the one or two take the lion's share or do they, does there always stay 50? Um, it's interesting to think about because we are so new in it. Um, this isn't like dental practices that we own where you, you get a playbook, you hire a consultant and you know what you're going to do. You can, you can budget out your next five years earnings and you know exactly what's going to happen. I think it's exciting to daydream and think about what all these options are because no one knows uh, how the supply side is going to get filled. Yeah, it's interesting because Dave and I, Dave Mintz and I, we do live Q and A every single month. We were talking about this before we hit record, and somebody had asked kind of the future of pickup and delivery. And you know, I'll I'll link to that in case anybody wants to go watch that. And I think the um, that particular conversation about that the future of pickup and delivery, I think, was towards the very end of that. If you want to skip ahead to that part of the conversation. But um, the the interesting conversation that we had is I think Dave is more on the side of, he thinks laundromats are going to own pickup and delivery long-term. And I wonder, kind of similar, I think, to the lines that you're thinking, I wonder if, like you said, more people are going to start realizing this is a huge business. This is not a phase. <laughs> like, you know, and I know that you know this, but like when people say that, it's it just feels like there's blinders on because it's it's not just our industry, right? It's everywhere now. Like, you know, pizza's been doing it forever, right? But I mean, this is, you know, Uber Eats is for every restaurant. I mean, there's ghost restaurants now that don't even have physical locations that are operating straight off of, you know, DoorDash and Uber Eats or whatever, right? I mean, it's, it's everywhere now. And people are starting to realize, Hey, my time is worth more than, you know, than the little bit of money it costs me to have somebody else do this for me in a lot of different areas. And just the rapid growth of pickup and delivery in my mind is like, I mean, listen, if I'm, if I'm, you know, if I got my, my target goal is 30 million bucks, right. If I have it right now, my ears are perking up and saying, man, there's a lot of money to be had here because, and I think I mentioned this on that live Q and a, or maybe some other places. Um, like I had a conversation with my neighbor, like, 
right? Like uh, laundromats. I do laundromats. I talk about laundromats all the time. I talk about laundry all the time, right? My neighbor who, you know, asked me about the podcast and all that stuff all the time. She was like, uh, I had mentioned pickup and delivery to her. And she was like, oh, I didn't even know that was available. Same with my tax guy. I was telling him about pickup and delivery. And he was like, I didn't even know you could do that. And I'm like, there's so many people who still, and this is like the hub. This is we're in LA and Orange County here. Like this is like the hub of laundry. And there's so many people who've never even heard of it still that the demand, like you said, the, the demand is there and growing and having those competitors there just raises awareness. And I'm wondering if that's going to consolidate down at some point to a few bigger players that maybe operate in a warehouse type of thing. Uh, and they're just churning out pickup and delivery laundry all day long, all night long on, on huge scales. Curious. I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that it's in the laundromat operators hands now. And I don't think they, that we can't hang on to it as operators. Um, I think that is going to take an elevation of the industry, uh, not just steal uh, Dave's, Dave's mantra. Um, but I, I do believe that more competition is going to come in. It's going to be better capitalized. And maybe we're not saying, uh, I, I see Dave's point, and I, I enjoyed that segment of the last Q&A, that uh, hopefully it stays in laundromat owners' hands. And I think the asterisk there that might be the bridge between our thought process and Dave's is, you're going to have to, that, that traditional laundromat owner archetype is going to have to change if you're going to keep that in your court. Uh, it, it is a big business. It is a logistics and warehousing business and it is, is high touch, high management. Uh, it is not absentee coin laundry, but laundromat owners have a heck of a head start. You have the facilities, you know the processes. Um, if you can get Moving in that direction, you have a hell of a head start against these people who might be better capitalized, uh, um, who I think are, are soon to come in and play. Yeah, I I could not agree more. And and like I said, I'm not sure what direct or which kind of way it's going to fall. And I think that we as laundromat owners, you know, I say I I wonder all that stuff aloud because I think we need to decide: do we want to be the ones to own this business? Or are we going to give it up to someone else? And if we're going to be the ones who own it, we need to start thinking more along the lines of how you guys are thinking, where you're thinking, hey, we need lots of space. We need some warehousing space. We need to be running 24-7. We need to be doing high volume stuff. We can't dilly-dally and try to you know, bootstrap for very long. I mean, you can bootstrap for a while to get yourself going, but you can't bootstrap forever. You're going to need to spend on paid advertising. You're going to need to invest in vehicles and in staff and in space and in equipment. Uh, cause that's what it's going to take for us as laundromat owners to own the pickup and delivery business, which I think is, if not already is turning into, it's transitioning into its own kind of industry in and of itself. Yes. Laundromat owners are doing it. We're utilizing the same assets, but I've been saying this forever. It's a different business than the coin laundry self-serve business. We're just using the same a- assets. Totally agree. And that's part of our, our initial struggle is that the, the business model we had was much more in line with a coin laundry. Uh, I, I still think we, we skew very, very, very heavily that way. Um, you just had to kind of squint and turn your head to see it. Uh, and now that we're getting able to prove it out, I think we have a, a really sweet hybrid model between the two. Uh, but that's, that's evolving. Um, that's evolving every month. That's evolving every day as we as we um, add more warehousing, add more space, add more operating procedures. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed the conversation you and Dave had. I think uh, you know what what better folks to talk about. I think Dave Dave is um, probably one of the few. Uh, him and I are probably one of the few that can empathize about the amount of volume and the amount of uh, logistics and warehousing that. Uh, that this is turning into. So uh, I'm curious to see what the big players as they are now do moving forward. Uh, we're certainly going to be rolling the dice and, and throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks because uh, we know something will, but no one knows what's going to right now. Yeah. So, okay. I, I want to just real quick, because I know we didn't really get into the weeds of how you've really built this business. And I really want to let some people know like how, you built this business. But the cool thing about this is we're going to be doing a webinar uh, on 
next Thursday, which is the 11th, November 11th, 2021. We're doing a live webinar. It's free. It's for anybody. We're going to be talking about how to start and scale your pickup a delivery service. And you know, you're going to be there. And we're also going to have a couple of other, you know, uh, top pickup and delivery uh, operators, you know, along with Nick Chaplow from Startup, who you use Startup for your software, right? Pick them That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick's going to be there. And then a few other, uh, a couple other top operators who are doing pickup and delivery. And we really want to just pack that sucker with some really great information. So whether you're getting ready to start pickup and delivery yourself, or maybe you've started and you want to take it to the next level, or maybe you're at the next level and you really want to start scaling it. Like these are the people who have been doing it. They know it. They're in the weeds. They've done it themselves and they're pushing the boundaries. I think. You know, my big one takeaway from just talking to you today on this podcast is that I love, like, love the mindset that you have of we're just pushing boundaries. We're going to throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks because, you know, you're looking out, you're not, you're not, you're making the playbook. You said this a couple of times, right? You're making, you're creating the playbook for this industry right now. You're on the front edge and uh, with, with a very select few other people around the country that are doing this on the same type of level. And, uh, I just, I'm like, first of all, thank you for, for doing a webinar with us. Uh, and second of all, uh, man, if you have any interest whatsoever in a starting or scaling a pickup and delivery business or B, uh, if you're just interested in this industry and where it's heading, uh, in general, just sign up for this webinar. The link is in the show notes, uh, which is at uh, laundromatresource.com slash show 77. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can get it down below. Again, it's live, it's free. And uh, even if you can't make it to the live, go sign up for that webinar and um, you'll get a replay of it if you, for whatever reason, you can't make it live. Um, and there'll be some opportunities to ask some questions too if you are there live. So, uh, can't wait for that. Make sure you sign up for that. And, you know, Mark, obviously, thanks for agreeing to do that. I think that's going to be a lot of value uh, for people there. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we've spent a lot of time today talking about space to do the laundry and warehousing and staff to do the laundry. I think one thing that um, maybe intentionally we haven't talked about today because we're going to be covering it on what, next Thursday uh, is the software. Um, we get a lot of questions. How do you do all that laundry? How do you keep track of it? What do you do? Um, software is a massive part of it. Uh, and I think laundromat operators, a lot of them think, um, you know, I'm just a lowly laundromat operator. I don't need massive software. I can use post-it notes. I can use Excel sheets. I can use the basic offering. Um, software is just as important as everything else in the facility, the washers, the folders, the loaders, the vans, the warehousing, um, that uh, I think that is one part of growth, uh, whether you're new um, or you're beyond that beginner level uh, that, that gets overlooked a lot of times. And I'm, I'm excited to talk about that side of it because if uh, sometimes when you go to look at demos, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I think having the operator's point of view and, and, and me and the couple of, uh, the couple of other folks on the panel's point of views will really show you the difference in how this little bitty change saves me 30 hours of payroll every, every pay period, right? This little bitty tweak here saves a mile of back and forth walking in our facility. Uh, that software, I think, with the newness of all of this, um, doesn't get the credit it deserves. Uh, and people kind of, you know, they want the cheapest or the most simple option. Maybe the one that has the most talking about it online. I don't know what goes into considering this, but I think if you're really looking to scale the webinar on Thursday will be really interesting because software will make or break your business uh, when you pile enough laundry into it. Yeah. And actually it brings up a really good point uh, to um, something that I and uh, an idea I'm trying to push is that I think we're also in the middle of a little bit of a revolution in our industry right now too, where we're, it's, it's a, it's a professionalize your business or die time right now. And I think if you're running your laundromat with post-it notes or even notepad and paper, um, 
you know, I think you could probably still to a certain degree manage on spreadsheets, but even that's really pushing it. I mean, I think that if you're not thinking of bringing not just your equipment and like paint and flooring and stuff up to modern times, if you're not thinking about your business practices and bringing those up, uh, the professionalism of them up a notch, then you're your tomorrow's zombie mats. Uh, I mean, cause right now the, the laundromats that are killing it are the ones who are running it professionally, you know, and part of that is the software, but part of that also is the mindset. And I, I think a lot of that mindset came through you today, Mark, uh, just through kind of your conversation. So I'm just, I think, yeah, I could not be more excited about the weather <laughs> genuinely. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited for it. So uh, Me too. Yeah. And I, and for those folks that are doing it on pen and paper, it's great acquisition targets, right? Like it's not adapt or die. It's adapt and sell it a five times multiple. Like it's a good time to be a laundromat owner. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, that, that I think that that technology leap and that professionalization leap is a big leap. Um, and, and I think we're seeing operators, um, um, with us personally, we're seeing operators that are intimidated by that leap and are still making a good amount of money on a great business that they've built and then can, can sell, uh, you know, at a four to six times multiple these days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Killer. Uh, all right. So you mentioned to me and I'm a little, uh, I'm a little bit excited and a little bit nervous about this. You mentioned to me before we jumped on that you want to play a little game and I have never played a game on the podcast before. So What's yeah. So we're talking, talking about? about all this laundry delivery. It, it sounds really fun and exciting and you're rolling around in profits and everything goes great. I want to, <laughs> I want to have you, you guess uh, real or fake, <laughs> real or fake. These are customer support headlines. The interesting thing about all of that uh, volume of laundry is that it comes with the people that own the clothes. Uh, mistakes happen and there is a bit of management of customers and handling of, of customer support. So I'm going to read off some, some uh, customer support headlines that come oh, through our, yeah. our, our database. And I want you to guess if they are real or fake. Oh, I love this. Okay. Let's hear them. First one I have for you is I have a four-year-old who's still learning to wipe after number two. <laughs> <laughs> that's the headline that's just, we're talking like like basically like the subject line um, of an email basically equivalent equivalent to a subject line in an email right <laughs> i would hope this i'm gonna say that's fake because i really hope that's not the subject line of a customer that's real that's a real one that's oh, real <laughs> Yeah, so it's not all it's not all good news. You know, someone had to pull that out of the bag and wash it. Uh, is that is that, a real yeah. headline. Uh, okay, we try to push those away, but uh, everyone, you know, our our guys pass around these headlines uh, that, that are handling and support, and yeah. you can't help but laugh. Okay, Jeez. okay. Um, number two, my dead grandmother could do laundry better than you. My dead grandmother. <laughs> that's. I mean, I want to say that's fake because I just. Want to, I want that to be fake. I've <laughs> that's real. That's real. Holy cow! All right, number three for you. Uh, subject line is I'm covered in rashes. I'm covered in rashes. Oh no! Please tell me that one's fake. That's real. Yeah, don't don't mix up your scented and unscented detergents. That was uh, uh, that was our mistake there. Uh, what 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 happens in that scenario if that happens? We have protocols um just like you have protocols to wash the laundry we have protocols and you know uh preset replies and and expectations and everything that go out um, you know when we mess up we're more than happy to to get it handled uh customers tend to come in pretty agitated um but uh you know it's they understand it's a service business and service businesses make mistakes we're happy to get it retreated or refunded that's possible but it makes for some good headlines man that's a that's a crazy and that's a scary one to get to. Like I'm covered in rashes. You're like, oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. I, if I remember that correctly, the uh, the body of the note was a lot softer than the subject line, but that's saved in our gallery of subject lines. Oh yeah, jeez. Okay, you ready for four? Yeah, you got another one for me. Let's hear it. Yep, last one, last one, last one. Pick up your effing phone. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say it's real because they've all been real, but. Oh, dude. That's real. 
Yeah. Welcome to laundry delivery. So anybody thinking that they're a uh, ace at uh, warehousing logistics and, and, and can capitalize, can be capitalized enough to finance the whole thing. You add on another layer of it is direct B2C um, business. Yeah. And, and you're going to be, you're going to have to have a CSR and some protocols to do that as well. But it's exciting challenges. It's fun to poke light at it. I think it's something along with software that doesn't get talked about enough as a massive challenge as you scale this thing. Um, so if anybody's considering hopping in, um, software certainly helps. Patience certainly helps, but you're going to have to come up with some protocols for all those too. Yeah. And a little, uh, little built in tact on how to respond to something like that. Um, yeah. I, and I, I love, first of all, I love playing the game. That's really fun. Uh, we should, should figure out how to do that more often on this podcast. That's, that's a good time. Uh, but also I love that it's a fun way to kind of communicate like, Hey, this business is not easy. Like, and I, you know, I mentioned to people, you know, this is a business. Yes. A laundromat can be a relatively simple business. If you're doing a self-serve laundry, it can be relatively simple, but you're still dealing with machines and you're dealing with people. And anytime you're dealing with machines, they're going to break down. Anytime you're dealing with people, you're going to have conflict and issues that come up. Um, and so having protocols in place to be able to uh, deal with stuff when it happens is huge. How did you guys build your protocol database basically uh, along the way? Just trial and error? Or? Trial and error. We got sick of answering the same questions over and over. Um, and you know, really thankful we did our our standard operating procedures is all online. It's digital. So when we hire at any position, you get access to that. And then um, as much as we are creating the playbook every day, we have most of it documented. So um, customers close are mixed up. There's a protocol. Um, customer is unhappy with folding. There's a protocol, uh, everything like that. So um, if you're getting into a document, everything you do, you will do it again. This is this history repeats itself. Um and software certainly helps it. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to on Thursday. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that on Thursday. Uh, I want to leave it with a couple of things. So, I mean, you have, you've gone to the school of hard knocks, right? You started from scratch, no location, no laundromat, and you've, you know, you've kicked your way and punched your way and scratched your way and clawed your way to uh, a pretty booming business with some pretty lofty goals now. And, and it's pretty substantial. So I was wondering, so we have pro tips, pro tips, which you gave uh, in the last, you know, that was like 50, 57 episodes ago now. So it was over a year ago. Uh, this is just what piece of it, because I talked to a lot of people who are interested in maybe getting in the way that you did without a location. What, can you, can you give like one piece of advice for somebody who's maybe thinking about getting in that way? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, this is a great opportunity to plug ourselves too. So um, my pro tip would be that the content is out there. Uh, Jordan, you're doing a great job at pumping content out. Uh, uh, Dave is doing a great job at pumping uh, videos out. Um, there's some blogs that I find really interesting. Uh, the, we just launched a operator subdomain on our website. So you can now go to operator.fold.com. And we have our, our crew putting articles and blogs up that tend to gear towards operators who are beyond beginner. So you've gotten the content from people who are um, putting it out how to get started. And now you need help uh, learning how to scale. So um, because we found that we were getting asked so many questions about how do you do this, uh, why not put it together in kind of a long form database for uh, it's not for everybody. It's long and it's dense. Um, but if you are one of the few really trying to push forward with this, I, I strongly believe. And our mission here is to make laundry day easy. Um, that started as a mission to help our customers. But I think now it's, it's starting to help laundromat operators. It's starting to help everybody in the industry that uh, there are is there are resources out there. Uh, content is coming from all directions. Um, guys at Curbside have great YouTube videos. Uh, Dave, I mentioned following Luke on Facebook, right? There's, there's content everywhere. Uh, and if you're looking to get in any of this, don't do it how everybody else had to do it by trying it themselves first and failing. Uh, the, the info is out there um, to learn from their mistakes. And that, that would be my, my pro tip. 
I remember being relatively uh, flat-footed when you asked me this last podcast, and I can't say I did much better this time. But uh, the content, content, content is what I've been preaching to uh, to folks in my circles recently. Well, dude, I mean, you basically just said, hey, learn from other people's mistakes and hard-earned wisdom. And I don't know that there is better a better pro tip for getting started than that. You know, that's a shortcut to success. And you know, kind of another way of saying that too is, hey, model after what successful people are already doing, right? Like Mark's sitting here saying, hey, we're pushing the boundaries and writing the playbook. Well, the playbook isn't for them. They already know, you know, they already know the playbook. The playbook is, you know, they're creating the content, which by the way, I'll have a link to operator.thefold.com. So anybody can click on that on the show notes. Again, learnmentresource.com slash show 77, or if you're on YouTube down below in the description, I'll have a link there to that too. Um, so you can go check out the stuff they're cranking, especially if you're already running a pickup and delivery, you're getting ready to start. Uh, that'd be a good place to go kind of get some information. So that's an awesome pro tip, not flat footed at all. Listen up. It's the secret sauce. We also have secret sauce. And I'm just wondering, do you have one tip for maybe somebody who's already going that, you know, something maybe that's working well for you guys that you would recommend? Hey, if you're if you're doing pickup and delivery, you want to step your game up a notch. Here's here's one tip for you. Delegate. Delegate everything. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I've struggled with and, uh, you reach scale where you can't do everything. Um, you reach a scale where now the leadership team can't do everything. The management team has to take it and they're pushing things down to the staff supervisors and they're pushing things down to the, uh, hourly workers. So, um, I think this applies across all businesses this is more of a realization for me in the last 12 months is that, uh, most of our problems have been caused by me being in the way. So uh, next chapter of the business for us is is me uh, getting out of the way and letting all the the folks that uh, we've hired do their job. Yeah, I love that. And what what I really like about that too is that you know as somebody who you know says that you're you're thinking about hey where are we going with pickup delivery how are we getting to fifty you know fifty locations and scaling all that out that by delegating allows you to tinker with those ideas and to ruminate on those ideas and to research on those ideas. Uh, and, and that in turn will get you to those goals much, much faster than if you're cleaning up your laundromat <laughs> or, you know, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. We like to let, let, uh, let everyone kind of, um, if you look at what we're doing as just a big, big way to gather data on what's working and not working is that the, the folks interpreting the data have to be out of the data. We have to let them go, let them do everything. And then we're going to step back and uh, analyze what's working. It's, uh, it's counterintuitive to how we got here, but it's, it's been critical in the last 12 months. And then the, really the traction we've been gaining, gaining uh, since then. Dude, well, uh, I, that's great. Incredible secret sauce. Uh, I was going to ask you recommended resources, but let's just call your recommended resources. Go into your, uh, go into your site and checking that out, checking out the content that's coming out over there. Uh, any other resources you want to recommend? No, that would be great. We're, this is, um, this is, uh, you know, falls in the passion project category for us. Uh, I really, really like seeing these operators jump from the, um, you know, the beginner stages of the pandemic to, to running some really massive businesses um, uh, and having this as a resource that we can um, shoot them a quick link and have, have everything that we've learned at their fingertips. Uh, maybe not everything, but most of it. Uh, uh, it it's been really fun. Uh, it's not monetized. There's no catch. Um, this has strictly been um, kind of a passion project for us and, and we're getting a lot of good feedback. It's, it's really exciting. So go if nothing else, uh, give it a couple clicks. It's uh, operator.thefold.com. And I uh, really appreciate that. Yeah. And I'll also, you know, again, I'll have the links in the show notes and in the description on YouTube. So, Mark, uh, this has been awesome. I am super pumped to hang out with you again on the webinar on November 11th, four o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock Eastern. You can sign up for that on laundromatresource.com right at the top of the homepage or go to the events page, laundromatresource.com slash events. 
or the the direct link to the sign in will be in the show notes or in the description for on YouTube. So you can click on that. There's a whole bunch of ways to get to it, uh, but it is going to be awesome. I cannot wait. You are the man. What is the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to hear about what you got going on? Uh, Twitter, actually. I've uh, I've, oh. I've gotten into Twitter. Twitter changed my life recently. Twitter is where uh, I think uh, I think the the movers and shakers of the small and medium sized business world are, and and I've been lucky to be opened into uh, uh, with open arms to a lot of those circles. So uh, a lot of cool behind the scenes on Twitter for for me personally. Uh, it's just my name, Mark Blaskamp. Um, the Fold does some sweet stuff on Twitter too. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'd feel free to, uh, uh, you know, contact form on our site, uh, on the operator site. We'll bring you to, to uh, our management team. I'm happy to get in touch. Uh, I really enjoy talking to other operators, see how, how this thing plays on a national level. So um, feel free to reach out either way. Sweet. All right. So I'll have the Twitter handles. I think you're the first one who's come on to say, hey, if you want to find me, you come to Twitter. Uh, so I'll Twitter is a wild, wild, wild place. I'll have to tell you more about my experiences offline, but, uh, yeah, a couple of tweets changed my life and I'm, I'm on Twitter now. Come find me. Oh, snap. I'm gonna have to go find you on Twitter. I have, I'm not super active on Twitter, so maybe I might need to, maybe I might need to jump in there and, uh, jump on board. So cool. All right, guys. Uh, Hey, Mark, this was awesome. Again, cannot wait for the webinar and thank you for the update and can't wait to hear Maybe we'll have you back on when you hit your like 20th, uh, 20th location or something like a halfway point ish. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you Thursday. Bye bye. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Super cool. Mark is just a super cool guy, but even more than that, he's doing awesome things with his laundromats and his pickup and delivery business and has some huge aspirations. So just the same as every single week. I want to encourage you pick one thing to put into action. It's the action that's going to get you to whatever your goals are. Uh, so make sure you're putting something into action from every single episode you listen to. So for me, it's an easy one. Obviously, uh, I am going to be at that webinar and I don't say that as my action set because I need to be at the webinar because I'm hosting the webinar and I'm, you know, it's my, my platform's webinar. Yes, that is true. However, I am just continually trying to get in the presence and hear more from high achievers, people who are, are just killing it in whatever it is that they're doing, because I want to learn from them, not only uh, what it is that they do, but more importantly, how it is that they do it and how they think about it and how they approach whatever it is that they do, because I want to adopt those mindsets, if not also those actions. So for me, go to the webinar, no brainer. Uh, not just because I'm hosting it, but also because I want to, I want to hear from these guys who are uh, top-notch operators in the pickup and delivery uh, service business. So, hope you'll join me there, and also pick something. Maybe that's your action step. Maybe there's something else from the episode, but pick something, put it into action, and we'll see you here again next week on the Laundromat Resource Podcast. And again, show notes are at laundromatresource.com/show77. Peace.